Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of Tech Reviews Nelp. And today I am going to give you a list of add-ons and whatnot to make your web browsing experience more secure and safe. Now as far as things goes, Anonymous, a hacking activist group, has released a list, which I'm showing right here, of things to make your browsing experience more secure. That might sound counterintuitive at first, but one thing to keep in mind is Anonymous is putting out this list because they're trying to make your web browsing experience more secure against certain criminals and certain others. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you can break your email, being if you can log into your email, if you can open a file or whatnot, someone, somewhere, wherever can also get in it, but by cracking it so if it's able to open someone somewhere can open it so no matter how secure you're going to get your stuff is it's not going to be the ultimate thing it's just or at least it's not going to be forever the ultimate thing that's one thing to keep in mind the second thing i want to mention right now is majority of this uh, on this list i do use i will point out things i don't use and i'll point out why but one thing I want to point out is Anonymous, it seems like they've been putting out lists like this lately. And a lot of things on their list, they have not mentioned one critical thing. The United States government, Israel and some others, have actually made a lot of this security stuff. Uh, for example, let's go to one of the first things I have on the list. is Tor. Tor is a very famous web browsing anonymous deal but one thing is is while it's a favorite tool for people who want to be anonymous uh, not talk about anonymous the group but anonymous online and not track and whatnot for one reason or another the navy the united states navy actually made this and on top of that they made it public a while back Given that they made it public and wasn't just a flat out leak, you can pretty much bet they already know how to crack it. So just keep that in mind. When any government releases any security deal to the public in um, you know like this, then for the most part they probably already know how to hack it, crack it, whatever you want to call it, and probably may even know how to make it do backflips if they want to. So that's one thing to really keep in mind. So while you can keep yourself safe from other individuals, the government is going to be a little bit harder. You're probably going to have to make your own stuff, and that's not going to be that easy because you're going to fight a multi-trillion dollar battle with probably, I'm guessing, that you have at any given time a thousand or less in the bank. So it's not going to happen. But... This stuff is very useful towards, you know, your average hacker. Your average hacker that might hack a bank account or identity theft or something like that. Not a government. So, jumping on to this. So again, the first thing on the list is Tor. Again, the reason why I don't use it is because, one, I don't really do anything stupid on the internet. Two, the big thing is, is... You know, if I want to hide from government, this is the last thing I will use because, again, the United States Navy made it and released it. So, as I said, that's not really the price thing to go with. And by the way, one thing I want to point out real quick is a lot of my stuff is darker because I have this enabled. So it just makes it easier for me to see. Now, as far as this goes, uh, no, not scripts. This is both on the Firefox and Chrome. And by the way, I prefer, as far as security goes, Firefox over Chrome because if you have a tracker on one of these tabs, being this tab, this tab, this tab, if it's on one of these tabs on Chrome, all tabs are affected. On Chrome, only one tab is affected, if any. So that means that it treats each one as a separate web browser. So the only way to kill a tracker on a tracker of some type on Chrome is by closing out the entire thing. 
Now, with this being said, you can lessen that experience dramatically, both on Firefox and Chrome, with not scripts. Now, majority of viruses that come through, even five second viruses type deal, is JavaScripts. Uh, last month, I believe, maybe maybe less than that, the um, FBI they recently made a virus that went out and found a bunch of bad people going on bad websites. I forgot exactly what, I forgot the exact details, but basically they used JavaScripts to to find people going on bad sites. Again, forgot the exact details. That's not important. The uh, this will actually prevent stuff like that from happening, which is very common. It's very common for hackers of all types, government or not, to use JavaScripts to figure out what any given individual is doing. The reason is, is most people don't really protect themselves over this. Most people think they have to have Java in order for their stuff to work. And sometimes that is true. But for a, for a large portion, that's not true at all. Unless your job requires it, it's not true. And um, even if it is true, you can still protect yourself. Not scripts is one way to do it. Again, I'll give a link to this below, to, to the Chrome deal below and um just look it up on firefox sorry i'm not going to flood my thing with with links next is adblock plus adblock plus and by the way all this is for free adblock plus is as it says blocks ads this is important because a lot of viruses whatnot come through advertisements being pictures videos whatnot and this is very important because trackers, cookie trackers and whatnot, come also through advertisements. That's important to note because if you don't want your stuff to be tracked for one reason or another, then you need to have something to black, uh, block those advertisements. Now, as far as that goes, uh, I can give you a quick example. If you go to something like Amazon and you head over to some other sites like Booting or whatnot, eventually you'll start seeing stuff on Amazon. Even if you never search for it, you might start seeing something like, say, Booting or whatever it is. And that's how they're using the cookies and whatnot from the advertisements. Now, that's not 100%, and this is where this comes into Disconnect. Disconnect helps you free up your bandwidth, as it says. And also, it helps that from happening. Helps your pre helps it from happening from your previous site from tracking what you're doing now. Also, stops uh, third-party sites from tracking you. I'll get into a little bit more of this in a second when we talk about Lightbeam. Next is HTTPS Everywhere. HTTPS Everywhere is a very useful tool http is what most people recognize as the start thing no one really knows i mean the web developer does know but the average person probably doesn't know what http is and it doesn't matter now one thing that most people don't know besides web browsers and whatnot or web developers and whatnot is the s is very important s means secure it means this is a secure site which you're not being tracked. That's why when you go to your email, when you log in your email, being Gmail or something like that, on a good email service, you know, Gmail, Yahoo, whatnot, not saying that's not unhackable, just, just saying that's good. The thing will be HTTPS, secure. I think Facebook is, is secure and some others, but public sites tend to not be secure. Some sites don't really have to be secure, so they're not. It's a little more work. I, I don't remember if Tech Reviews and Help is secure or not. So I, sorry if it's not, but again, it is a little bit more work and also does cost more money. So a way to fix that is by HTTPS everywhere. It's just an add-on, you add it on, and it makes it where everything's pretty much secure. So as far as the next thing I'm going to show, I never used this, but 
it's supposed to be some type of replacement for Skype to make a secure quote unquote Skype type of deal. Now, I don't use Skype and I never used this, so I cannot vouch for it. Someone might, so fair, why not show it? Lightbeam. Lightbeam is something I can vouch for. Lightbeam shows you what is tracking you or what could be tracking you, and it's quite interesting. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it for the Chrome, and I really would have loved it for Chrome, but I found it for Firefox, obviously. Now, when you download it for Firefox, what you'll do is go down to here. It's not really obvious. And you just click that, and let's bring it over here. And as you see here, it shows all your connected sites. So one thing I want to point out is obviously I got YouTube stuff going on and I got my sites and whatnot. It's obviously my sites directly connected to YouTube. If you look at the homepage, you'll find out why my videos and whatnot is connected directly there. And with Google, it's obviously uh, directly connected and it's kind of obvious when you take a look at it. Now, with this being said, it shows connections as far as what sites connect to what, showing that YouTube does not connect to that, YouTube does not connect to the Pirate Bay, but it shows sites that you visited, and basically what's in the middle of these, I guess you call it circles, is the sites that you visited within a given time. Now, I recently downloaded this. I don't really use it that often. I don't really care enough. But what this shows, as far as this goes, at 5-ish, um, try to zoom in a little. 5-ish, I visit all of these sites. These are all the third parties that could see what I was doing given if I will allow them. And given I don't have the adults and whatnot. And same goes with these circles, this site I visit, this site I visit, and these, even when I'm not visiting something, some stuff is still looking at. Like, as you see here, Google is a third party, because I didn't really go to Google, and it's still looking at my stuff. That's very important to note. So, basically, if you don't trust them, you know what to block. It's very important. Um, it's, it's useful in that aspect. It, it shows you what sites are connected to what, what third party sites connect to what you visited, um, what uh, you gotta watch out for. And if you find something, say for example, I found, I don't trust that. I, like, I, I, I don't know what it is, but hypothetically, let's say I don't trust that. I can go and click on that, see what sites it's connected to. And then I can go and surprise some Google thing. And I can go see what where it's server located. Same thing with all these others. All this so it's probably United States. Well that that's the first one that's not, but still you can see what's connected to and you can go from there and if you know how to you can block it all together very useful now as far as things goes again I'm not promising this will secure you from your local government uh, depend on how competent they are if obviously if the United States Israel China some others it's probably not going to protect you if you're some others it probably will I'm not going to name them because who knows if they get competent tomorrow or not or incompetent now as far as things goes if you do find something that you would like to add onto the list or found that something doesn't work for you then feel free to leave them in the comment below and that way we can help everybody with this again i don't condone any illegal activity but none of this is illegal at least in the united states and um that's important to note because in some countries it could be illegal to block your own country from seeing what you're doing which is actually kind of important because Laws can change day by day, and that is quite important to stay out of federal or whatever jail that your country gives. 
uh, given that this is an international crowd that I'm talking to. Now, as far as things goes, if you like this video, found it helpful or whatnot, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and please share and help me out by that way. And if you have any other suggestions or if you found a problem, again, leave a comment below. And if I make a video on your suggestion or problem, I'll give you a shout out. And this has been Craig Bennett, the founder and owner of TechFuse Help, and hope you have a great day.